evening to you and thank you so much once again for sticking to Y254 TV. You are watching the Power Talk Show and I am Cheryl Blessing. This evening, as October has come to an end, Tuna Karibia Kumaliza 2025, and there's one thing that I don't think we've ever had a conversation on, on this platform, uh, celibacy. I want us to talk about sexual purity, how to abstain from it, and what goes into that. Do you think celibacy can be a way of life? I want us to have this conversation because there's a traditional way of living and there's a modern way of living. And the people who are right in the, in the middle of it, we're trying to figure out what is the right way of doing things. In a world where sexual uh, promiscuity and active uh, sexual lives are very well promoted, we want to figure out, can celibacy be a right way of living? Can it be a sustainable way of living through dating, up till marriage? Is it something that we can do? I want us to get into uh, this conversation. And joining me live on set are people who are familiar with the lifestyle. I'm joined here by Joel, who is a podcaster and a very, I think you're an ad advo uh, advocate of this lifestyle. Sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Karibu Sana Joel, how are you doing? I'm great. I hope you've had a lovely, lovely day. My day has been great. Yeah. And I'm super excited to be here. I'm excited for this conversation as well. Ah, sure. And right next to Joel, we have Hilda Lumati as well, who's an author yeah. and a CEO of uh, Unfolding with SPE, which she'll tell us a bit more about. Mm. How are you feeling? I'm good. I'm happy to be here today. It's such a pleasure to host both of you. And I'm so Thank excited you. for this conversation. Kidogo me match. I'm kuniambia things like brown. I'm kunipea me mom. Li from group chat. What was celibacy? What was celibate? This is how you've spot a celibate person. The only thing I'm matching is like the yellow. <laughs> and maybe Joel's jeans. <laughs> but that's okay. Sure. I'm looking forward to this conversation because celibate living is not something that's particularly been promoted or talked about in the recent years. Realistically, the, the other side has been talked about more. It has been promoted everywhere we come across people talking about sex, sexual activity, yeah. how to do it and all those things. Mm. So we want to talk about the counter side of it the celibate side of living is it something that is sustainable and i want you to join me through this conversation by going on our platforms at y254 do you think it's something that you can live without do you think sex is something that you can live with that um, without i want you to go to our platforms at y254 currently across all social media platforms and let us know what you think is it possible for you to live a sex-free life is it something that is sustainable for you to just get it out of your life and do without it up until marriage up until you find the right partner up until you settle down that is what i want to find out from you on our platforms right now but to kickstart the conversation even before we got on air we were talking about the difference between celibacy and abstinence because we, we talk about abstinence a lot more. Yeah. We don't talk about celibacy. So maybe we can define this too and understand what it means. Hilda, what would you define as celibacy and what would you define as abstinence? Celibacy is the state of being unmarried. And now when you're in that state of being unmarried, you refrain from any sexual relations. And that is like long term. Something that you do, and from where I'm sitting, I believe it's a religious thing. But then when you talk about abstinence, now you have a goal. It is for a season. That's short term. You are only abstaining until your time of marriage. So whoever is abstaining is waiting for marriage. But celibacy is like a long term thing. You're serving God and you're saying you're not engaging in these sexual relations for long term. Mm. Yes. So it's something, celibacy is something that it's, it's not just a matter of a few months it's not a matter of even a few years mm. it's longer than it, that yeah. it's a lifestyle that you've yes. you're choosing to stay away completely from all sexual activity mm. and you've mentioned something about uh marriage mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. so celibacy has to do with whether you're married or whether you're unmarried celibacy has to do with you being unmarried you're mm. staying unmarried all through mm. i'll give an example of a nun someone like that or, yeah. or, or father you know yeah but now when when you're practicing abstinence you have a goal when you're, you you get to a point where you want to get married then now you can engage in sex in ma in the context of marriage mm. yes I like that that's mm. very clear especially when you give examples mm. uh, what about you Joel what would you define as celibacy versus abstinence 
for me celibacy is uh, actually um, the deliberate we have to use the term deliberate and intentional decision one makes to refrain from any sexual activity that is not just limited to sexual intercourse mm -hmm. it goes beyond that talk about pornography masturbation and even simple things like sex chatting or flirting so to me that is celibacy also to add on that celibacy is a way of life is a lifestyle you cannot be celibate this week then next week you're not celibate then you're celibate again <laughs> in 2025 <laughs> no you have to commit to a lifestyle of seriously abstaining and it has to do with purpose you have to define what your purpose is what do you want to achieve and then it goes beyond just the physical state of you not engaging fi uh, sexual uh, sexually or engaging um, or um, being involved in sexual encounters it also has the other part of the, there's also the spiritual bit of it because everything that we have that we are or anything that we have has to stem from insights as a man thinks in his heart so is he so you might yes be inactive sexually but you're thinking about chicks you're looking at ladies you're looking at pictures you're wishing you're imagining some people are only uh, refraining from sex because of the society and yeah. the societal standards but deep within them they have some desires they're just waiting for a break mm -hmm. so when you're celibate you're not waiting for any break actually you're the one in control you have the power yeah. to stay that way so it's out of choice it's not something to do with your lack of or your unattractiveness mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah sure so and for abstinence it can be as she said it can be for a short period of time maybe you are in a marriage setup and there's a project that needs your 100 percent concentration or you need to travel outside the country f to accomplish this kind of project and at that time you do not want any distractions mm -hmm. so you commit let's say for three weeks i will abstain from sex and you agree with your spouse and you make it happen mm. yeah i like that i like the definition because it's very deliberate celibacy is intentional yeah. there is a goal attached to it yeah. you want to accomplish something it's a lifestyle yeah. you have decided this is how i'm going to live th for for the next few years of my life because yeah. of a particular reason behind it yeah. it can be religious it can be uh, sometimes even physical sometimes it's even creative because you want to focus and lock in and focus on something in particular yeah. and uh, with abstinence you've mentioned that even in marriage you can abstain yeah. during certain periods so we'll get deeper into that but there's also this thing that i've been wondering mm -hmm. can i is it possible for someone who isn't a virgin to be celibate? There's something called, or should I respond to that? Yes, please, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> There's something called secondary virginity. Mm. You know, in my line of teaching, I've met people who've told me, we are not virgins, we've done it before, yeah. so now where do we go from here? There's something called secondary virginity, and secondary virginity is for that person who has already engaged in it. I always say we serve a merciful God, mm -hmm. and a God who forgives, and a God who, when you come to him wholeheartedly, just, he, you know, he accepts us with our mistakes. So God is a God who forgives, and he gives second chances. So this is like a second chance. I'll give an example. You have slept with 10 men or 10 women. What God is telling you is, can your 11th person be your husband? So someone is, you are free to practice secondary, but it is a decision you have to make. Mm. Because God you will not come and tell you, yeah, you have to be intentional. It's yeah. a decision you have to make and say, you know what, from here, I know I have done mistakes before, but from this day until my time of marriage, I'm mm. going to wait. I like that. Yes. But the funny thing is something came to my mind <laughs> when, you, when you were saying that. Yeah. There's this meme that was going around. Ati ati mtuwe sexually active, alafu kifika kwa kondo na Oh, wow. And you know, people usually think, mm. when we talk about it, people think you have to have some sexual experience yeah. before marriage, yeah. before a relationship yes. even. That's only, it's just your boyfriend or your girlfriend. That has been glorified. That is the lesson that has been passed around. You have to have some experience. So, Joel, <laughs> as a guy, because I know particularly this is usually 
with the, maybe if a guy asks a girl and then they're like no I'm abstaining for now then they start thinking perhaps ni mimi too it's it's me that you refuse they don't accept it sometimes it's even the counter when you yeah. tell a girl I'm abstaining for now so I'm not doing this up until marriage they start wondering ai kwa ni shida ko ni gani but you you were telling us before that you wish you could have taken back the experiences yeah. you wish you could go back and rewrite everything and yeah. the people who can resonate with that so many people wish the first time didn't happen the way it, it did mm -hmm. they wish they waited but unfortunately uko kwa hiyo season enye it shall happen yeah. and society keeps telling you you have to you have to mm -hmm. so how do you go about that joel so i like the fact that she brought in the god factor mm -hmm. because um we human beings are spirits by the way we're just contained in these earthly earthly bodies and speaking from her side like the god side um i'll just i'm allowed am i allowed to share scripture please yeah, so please feel free second corinthians <laughs> chapter 5 verse 17 says if any man is in christ he's a new creation behold all things are gone behold all things have become new what you behold beholding is like you look at something and you stare and you deeply look at it until you you start believing what you see so uh i hear people teaching about soul ties and what not i don't believe in soul ties because i believe that if you come into christ if you receive a new spiritual life you are your past has gone you you are a new creation mm -hmm. creation or your new creator so for me i know we are on public television i wouldn't have disclosed uh the body counts i had but it was extremely high because i was an an addict of sex i couldn't do without it and it was you know the problem with it any sexual addiction is that people it's not written all over your face you know you can see a drunkard in the gutter and help them take them to rehab but you might be living with a sex addict in your house and even fail to identify them as victims and yeah. so it becomes so hard because it's also shameful so the society yes has sold the idea that you need to do sex and personally after i started uh, abstaining or rather living a celibate life uh, there's a chick i met the vibes were good but then she told me she she cannot get into a serious committed relationship without having a test drive mm -hmm. so for me i told her i'm for celibate and these are my reasons so of course we did not come to an agreement i had to let it go because now i'm purposefully doing it i'm intentional about it i'm not afraid of a god who's up on the sky who will punish me if i'm not cel celibate no i'm doing it out of love for god yeah. like i'm doing it not as a law <laughs> but actually as an act of love you see because one thing that celibacy does to you it makes your mind clear yeah there's a lot of focus because you see young people someone gets into their first job they're earning 40k but they want to get a two bedroom house they want to bring girls to their house mm, and, and there's weekend. one thing <laughs> <laughs> there's one thing that most men do most men are um, natural men people who have not accessed this kind of truths that we're sharing about here they're usually sex driven yeah. if someone takes your number the, their end goal is to have sex with you yeah. if they invite you for a drink they want after the drink to take you home. Yeah. If they invite you for a date, at the end of the date, they want to see how they can get sexual with you. Yeah. So it's one thing that is really, really affecting the youth currently. And I can blame it not just on the culture, but also on what people see and what people are made to believe. Yeah. As I said in the scripture, uh, behold, all things are new. What you behold is what you become. If you, you are always on your phone, even if you're not looking at <laughs> pornographic sites, there's just a way that you'll find a, a link on Twitter of some trending mm -hmm. tape, and that's how you land on in Telegram, yeah. and that's how you'll, <laughs> you'll end up mm -hmm. going to other sites. So it's, it has to take a lot of discipline, but before discipline, just have a defined purpose mm. of why you want to be celibate. Yeah. 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 I like that both of you, your purpose is rooted in God. Yeah. Mm -hmm heavily rooted in God yeah. because you understand God you you have a fear of God you have a love of God so if God wasn't in the equation yeah. <laughs> would we be celibate <laughs> Hilda if God wasn't in the equation would you have been married a virgin 
you know for me sharing my story it has taken god mm. and i acknowledge that because he's the one who created this body yeah and this body the volume can go like up mm. i always say there are no pastoral hormones that the pastors don't experience these things it is for every single person yeah now the question is are you intentional how do you handle yourself because it's only god who gives us self control True. when i was growing up i used to hear a lot of abstain 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 but no one was really explaining to me why you know we don't yeah. explain the why before we get to the how to do it. Yeah. So growing up I used to hear a lot of that and I think that is something that stuck in my mind. Me I just knew sex is for married people. Yeah. So me in my singlehood and my courtship I'm not supposed to engage in it. And at yeah. that point I was not in a good relationship with God. I had not known God that much. Yeah. I was that girl who used to say it's not a must for me to go to church, you know. Mm. But then I look back and I'm like how did I manage to wait? It took God. Even yeah. with the mistakes that I have made, he still loved on me and he still prepared me for a moment like this. Mm. So, you know, when we define sex, sexual purity, according to the world, we will be misleading people. Mm. The only best way to define sexual purity is according to the word of God. And he has told us in 1 Thessalonians 4.3 that you should remain sanctified flee from sexual immorality and when god says flee from it he's like he's telling you run away yeah because he is the creator of this it was his idea and yeah. if it's his idea it's a good idea and he had a reason why he created for for in the context of marriage it should happen in the context of marriage yeah. but what we are doing now we are doing it outside of marriage and it can be very difficult when you're just in the world when you don't yeah. know god it might be quite difficult for you to abstain and wait. Yeah. So, so God is important. God. In, you need God, mm. like literally, you mm. need him. Mm. Yes. And, and I like that you've said that. Uh, before, before I pass the question over to Joel, I want to remind you what we're asking on our social platforms uh, as we continue with this conversation. Do you think it's possible for you to lead a sex-free life? Mm. Given this day and time, given what we know about society today, technology, all the things that are at, uh, are at our disposal, is it possible for you to lead a very sex-free life? Is it something that's sustainable? Is it something that's doable? Mm. So our guests are telling us that it's something that you can practice, yeah. but you need to be rooted in God. You need to have an understanding of why you're doing it. It has to be very personal. But when you're saying that, I'm thinking back to society, the way Joy Liv brought uh, about society. There's a lot of peer pressure. Mm. There's a lot of peer pressure from school, your friends, the, the groups that we are in sometimes, social media platforms. There's a lot of peer pressure of what are you doing? Why are you not doing this? Because this is what everyone has normalized. Yeah. So if you're the opposite, mm. people shun you. They <laughs> tend to push you away. That is true. Yeah. Mm. And I remember, I think, from when we learned about adolescence, yeah. it became a major thing. Because kids didn't, didn't even understand in primary school what... what sexual activity was and Hilda you you said something important we were told abstain mm. but we weren't told why you should abstain mm. it was just abstain abstain sex is bad yeah. it is for people who are married <laughs> and that tends to bring curiosity in, yes. in some minds because yeah. why is it bad I have to see why it's bad so that I can you know make up my mind and sometimes people see when on okay so this is sex but because of the pressure they keep on doing it Joel I know for guys, there's usually a lot of pressure <laughs> from men, mm. you know, your friends. Ati, ati men are visual beings, what eh, they see is what, what they want. What you watch. see, eh. And then, you know, sometimes <laughs> your friends are like, oh, me, u, u, u eh. I'm assuming. <laughs> I, I, I assume because I've sat with some men and they, they talk about women or sometimes they'll talk about sports, money, cars. But women are a major conversation. Yeah. So how do, you, how do you operate given the peer pressure? Or let's talk about from high school. So, uh, Your peer pressure is going to influence so, Ghani. So even before we get there, mm. th there's a very important question you had asked. How mm. would we abstain when God is not mm. in the picture? Yeah. Mm. So you see, the, there are three cultures, right? Uh, or three groups, rather. They are the traditionalists, uh, men who say, you know, originally we are we are polygamous by nature mm -hmm. those are called traditionalists mm -hmm. and they believe that thing so much and we also have modernists mm 
so modernists say um, you know you, I can date you I can have someone else some secret lover somewhere yeah. and that kind of thing and uh, especially in the modern society a man's influence is valued based on the, on the number of ladies yeah. that he can get for himself and of course we also have now the God culture the God aspect that has to do with you know Revelation 5.10 says he made us kings and priests unto our God I've never seen a king who has multiple queens <laughs> it's yeah. really just <laughs> just one queen yeah. so without God it's difficult because now the other two voices the modernists voices and the traditionalist voices are so loud in the heads of men and that's why you see for ladies it's easy for you to just be with one spouse mm -hmm. but for men as you said that pressure for me I think when I was in high school I was a virgin mm -hmm. like I was not engaging in sexual activities and when I got to campus I think I, will, I used to really really pity anyone who <laughs> was engaging in sin at that time until I became a victim and when and, and it's like I, 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 I took a bite of the apple and I was like wow <laughs> 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 the third eye was opened and and it was hard to go back so I'd say there are some doors that you don't want to open yeah. because the plan of the devil is to distract you from accomplishing greater goals that 1,000 shillings that you are saving to impress the lady you're, 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 you want to impress she you know she can come for that date and she the coffee you bought for her doesn't mean anything like there's someone else who was offering her something better but she wanted to spend time with you to know you stop thinking about sex it's not yeah. the end of it all so for men they get that pressure more i'd say it's good for you to just think about your future your purpose what yeah. do you want to achieve because it's the same thing and this is the funny thing that happens a man that has pursued you for sex once he gets it, <laughs> it's over. <laughs> you see, men are project oriented. <laughs> so once the project is over, <laughs> I'm telling you, an, uh, another project starts. So yeah. that's why you see a lady say, "Oh, you know, I don't know what I've done for to him. I don't know. It, it, it's it's not about you. <laughs> it's nothing you've done. Yeah. It's their nature. Mm -hmm. So yeah. any man that has not received this new life, I just invite you receive Christ. It's the best thing that can ever happen to you." And some are even born again, actually. Some are even in leadership roles in churches. You hear of pastors doing crazy things. They've not come to the understanding of who they are. Yeah. It's lack of self-awareness. When you know you're a king, <laughs> you are nobility. You are a noble person. Yeah. You're not just any ordinary person out there. So you need to think deeply about what you want. And, of course, make some adjustments. It looks yeah. boring. When God gives you the rules or the laws, it's not to restrict or to punish you. It's actually to protect you. For instance, if you tell a kid, I don't want you to see you touching that banner. I don't want to see you in the kitchen. It's mm -hmm. not like you're trying to, to, to make their life hard. Yeah. It's because if they touch it, they will be burnt. Yeah. You are saving them from a danger that's ahead. And what, what, what are the common dangers? Number one, we have, um, of course, the sexual transmitted uh, diseases or illnesses are on the rise. Mm. Number two, there's this current, current burden of baby mamas and baby daddies syndrome. Yeah. And the modernists have made it to be so common, but actually it's not something that is common at all. Look, 10 years ago, it was not that common. Yeah. We are borrowing culture from what we see on the TV, on our phones. So this thing of, you know, I have three baby mamas and all the kids are going to school. You see, and now I need school fees and I need all that. So it's a lot of pressure. There are also women who've been left the burden of raising up their kids on their own. And yeah. I think it's very unfair. So um, there are so many, so many dangers. Even mental alertness. When someone, someone who's sexually active, they are not as sharp <laughs> as a celibate person. Yeah. So when you're celibate, you also have a a very alert mind and mm. you you work on projects and you finish them without the distraction of uh, you know sometimes i was just telling a friend of mine you might have gonna bay pale and then you know when you're engaging in in sex of course the lady will tell you ah what well, might you go to job today let's just stay in bed <laughs> let's just to chill to, 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 to cuddle uh, you see that cuddling and then it it lowers your drive as a man to accomplish other things yeah you know? 
I, I like your answer because you've really taken us into into so many things of what we need to talk about. The, the social media influence of what we consume, yeah. the culture that is there, and easy, easy to just come up that we've borrowed from maybe the Americans, from the Europeans, that isn't part of the African culture. Yeah. But when you've said you've never seen a king with uh, <laughs> multiple queens, I can tell you for a fact that people will bring King Solomon to that equation yeah. <laughs> and tell you, but let them let, let King Solomon come to the set and explain to <laughs> us kindly, because <laughs> you know people people tend to find the loopholes yeah. to justify to some justify. some behaviors. Mm. They'll what say is people are trying to reason with sex. Yeah, they're, they're trying to, to they're say, but with sex. I'm not harming yeah. anyone. So, you know, King Solomon, the the King Solomon that had 700 wives and 300 concubines or vice versa was not the same that wrote the book of Ecclesiastes. How so? Because he was young. Oh. And then later on, he was like vanity of vanities, all his vanity. Yeah. Because he found out that the feeling is the same. <laughs> the yeah. taste is the same. He was just wasting money <laughs> or resources on multiple people because it is just that God in his mercy. You know, people would say King Solomon was in the Bible and what not. Yeah. Remember, this is before Jesus, before the time of Jesus. It means that King Solomon was not saved. Mm. <laughs> so after Christ came, I, have you heard like, that Apostle Peter had 700 <laughs> like multiple. Or yeah. Apostle Paul? Because it's, I, I also like the aspect that you've brought because time is a very important factor as well. Yeah. Through understanding based on experience, you change your mindsets, you grow, you, mm. you, you yeah, evolve. you're transformed, yeah. you evolve. And that's one thing that the youth don't like to hear. Mm. You know, because when I'm young, I'm going to say what I'm going to break, what I'm going to holiday, you know? Mm. I, I see people meeting in town and, you know, people are coupled up because you want to say, I have a boyfriend, I have a girlfriend. And sometimes the rules for men are different than for women because even traditionally, men will be glorified when they engage in sex. But women are expected to be pure, chaste, don't do anything beyond, you know, something. In, that's how it used to be in the past. Then there was a time when feminism came in and sexual freedom, sexual choice was advocated for women. Mm. So women were given the freedom. You can choose, you can have multiple partners. So some women are acting like men. You know, they're very promiscuous because now the, they have the freedom, they have the right. But Hilda, how do you think these rules were helping us? Because, say when you talk of free, you can, it's very easy for you to make the wrong choice if you have no guidance, if you just, it's an open question. Mm. But if you have some guidance, you're told between A, B, C, choose Ghani, you know, you have some ukon, ukon limited in some ways. So what was the benefit of the traditional way of living versus the modern way of living that we're experiencing now? I think when we talk about uh, sexual purity and abstaining and, you know, being a virgin, we think it's old school. And when you look at our current society, we don't want to have that discussion. In fact, when, when you're the one who's not having sex, you're the one who has a problem in our yeah. current society, you know. So... Sex is a powerful force that very few can triumph. Yeah. And the question is, are you intentional? Yeah. With even the choices you're making. You see, whoever is in your ear has your faith. They can either build you or they can break you. So I, I, I really disagree with this thing of saying, you know, sexual purity is we cannot be practicing it right now like he had said we are test driving kuna mwingine hata anasema ukinunua avocado wewe si lazima ufinye kidogo ujue hata ujue iko sawa wanakukatia maembe kwa soko i think we've gotten to a point where our faith has been thrown outside of the window and yeah. you know without faith it is impossible to please god you know even pursuing purity you need unbreakable faith you need unbreakable faith because with the current society, you can easily be drawn away from what God is saying. Yeah. So right now, I think we should be teaching more of what is in the word. When you define it according to the word and not according to what people are saying, because sex has even been commercialized. People yeah. are making money out of it. It yeah. is everywhere, literally. I think we need to differentiate that. 
and understand that there is the creator of it. The same way you go to the supermarket and buy a TV and you have a manual, you read the manual before you touch the product. Hello, the one who created sex has a manual for you. Yeah. And that manual is the Bible. So if, if society is telling you what is contrary to his word, then you're doing it wrong. Yeah. Let's go back to the original kingdom agenda on why God created sex in the first place. Yeah. When you start comparing with traditional wherever and everything, we will be confused. Yeah. The only refuge we have is the word of God. Nice. Yeah. I really love that. It's very rooted in Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, before we continue with this conversation, Nimewauliza on our platforms, is it possible for you to lead a sex-free life? Is it something that you can do in this day and time? And we have some comments from Facebook. We have Esther Tati Rastagal, who is tuned in, Asante. We have Lavi Lavina, who says, yes, kwani kama huna mtu utadu? Question mark. Yoni, by circumstance, ama ni choice. Uh, yeah. What are the other comments that we have? Because I think that that trickles down to a definition yeah. of regardless of the situation. Then we have Kaka R. James Safi, I'm a following Nandi Hills Town, I'm in Asante. One, one boy, I, I hope I've read that right, says yes, of course. You just need to control yourself. Muranga is tuned in, Asante. JJ Ozengo, Amesema, not really. Anyway, Mombasani is following, Asante. Joe Moura, Amesema, my blood is hot. <laughs> <laughs> what is making your blood hot, Joe? <laughs> Lex Wanza Amora Mesema, yes, it is possible. I'm still pure blood till now. Thank you for that. Kizito Nyongesa Mesema, count me in from Mwanda in Bungoma County, Asante. Israel K. Anapitia tu. Tuambia Maoni Israel, what do you think about our conversation? Because is it possible for you to live a sex free life? We have Jekins Mwangi Wakwaben. I may say, my yes, it's possible. It just requires self control. Thank you. Keleleza Kitanda. I may say, my present out of Kam View, Massive Embu County. Asante. But your name? So, Jinako Metuambia. Answer. Sanchez Mrege, I may say, my Ruthie, well represented. How? And we are normal human beings. <laughs> What do you mean? When you have states, you know more. <laughs> Billy Clinton, I may say my yes, of course. Thank you for that. Uh, Toke Sugar Wipe, uh, Sugar Wipe Successful. I may say my listening from my Lita to Meru Massive to Nopata loud and clear. Thank you. Peter Maina, I may say my yes, speaking from experience. 16 years free of sex. That's impressive. Thank you. Melvin William, I may say my Ile Jeshia self pollination. Oh my God, what do you mean? Tebu tu fafanulie. Augustine Rabbits amesema watching live from Shikumu, Asante. And I think what, what Melvin is saying is also you're still engaging in sexual activity. Maingi Paul amesema ako locked in Asante. At this point, I think, Dishon Mutuse, amesema how if you're a normal human being. Uh, thank you for your comment. Abitush Jr. amesema Embu is following. Uh, do we have any more comments? I like the fact that we, are, we have uh, two opinions. Yeah. Kuna people who say yes, of course, mm -hmm. with self-control. Apo ni muhimu. Awe ngino nauliza, ati kwani au si normal human beings. I want us to get back uh, after the break. I want us to take a very short break and then come back and uh, take a, a look at these misconceptions. Because kuna misconceptions nyingi about celibacy. And then we want to understand what are some of the influences that are promoting the kind of lifestyle that we can see in this day and time. Let me take a very short break, but stay tuned. My name is Cheryl Blessing, and this is Power Talk. <laughs> 